Hi, everyone. This is Shirley Farrar, and you have just entered Encouragement on Fire. And I'm very excited. This is the month of March 2023. And as I told you before, this entire year, each month, we're going to go over some type of sickness or disease. And the month of March, we're going to talk about obesity. Now, remember, anything that I'm talking to you about, I'm also dealing with either in my life, a family member's life, or either a friend's life. And if it's not any of those three, then I'm just providing you information. So again, this month is about talking about a chronic disease called obesity. And obesity is one of those things that, you know, we relate to people being very large or overly large, right? Um, if I said to you, out of 10 people walking down the street, who do you believe is obese? Well, most of us use our eyes and we look at individuals and we say, oh, that's an obese person simply because they're larger than the others. However, there is a sure way to know if right now you're sitting in your seat and you are um, an individual that, you know, is actually going through uh, chronic disease called obesity. And this is something that I also am applying to my own life. So I don't want you to think I'm saying this to you. Um, this is something I'm looking at for myself. And I see there's some areas that I need to grow in. And so I'm willing to do that. And I'm working on it. And I'm hopeful that you'll go along with me on this journey. And, you know, I always say to people, begin again. You have to start from somewhere. So let's begin to look at that. All right. So we have the something called the BMI. Um, it is the body mass index. OK, so if you want to look it up, look it up. I always tell everyone, if you want to know some information, anything I'm talking about is coming from the Mayo Clinic or it's coming from the CDC. And you can look up everything online. Um, but the BMI is something that is utilized in order to find out if individuals are obese or not. And when you are, you know, reviewing or you're, you're finding out if you have a chronic disease or not, um, the first thing that we were told from our doctors is, what are the symptoms? Always looking at the symptoms. So what are the symptoms? The symptoms are a few things. But a sure symptom is to use the uh, body mass index, the BMI, and you will know exactly where you fall on the chart. So on the chart, you could actually be underweight, which is not obese. You could be at a normal and healthy weight. You could be overweight. And then you could actually be obese. I think more of us are going to find out we're more in the overweight and obese um, area. Um, and, you know, this is subject because I know a lot of times people say, well, um, in my culture, people are a little heavier than in other cultures. And I believe that to be true. Um, however, when we're talking about chronic disease, the doctors are giving us information that will help us to be able to push the chronic disease away, the sickness away, um, to become healthier in whatever we need to do. So I say to you, there is nothing that is an exact science. Everyone, come on, even a doctor will tell you, it's not that exact. I can only give you this and we'll get as close to it as possible. So use these numbers as getting close to it as possible. So if you fall into the line of 18.5, then you're considered underweight. 18.5 uh, to 24.9, that's a healthy. And 25 to 29.9, that is considered uh, overweight. And then 30 and above, that is considered obese. Okay, so I encourage you to talk to your doctor about that. And what they do is they actually take your height and then they um, also include in this calculator um, your weight. So you have to be honest, stand on that scale, and be honest and put it in there. And you're going to get the BMI number. 
And then it's going to give you what they, that means. So I say to you, look at it. Okay. So if you fall a little closer into the obese part, then is it, does it mean that you're obese? Not necessarily, but you could be still overweight. Um, but if you find your, if you want to know, well, am I underweight, but those numbers are closer to the um, obese side, then of course that's a far off number. So again, talk to your doctor. But I think each of us should do that this month. So I'm encouraging you. Come on, you guys. I'm encouraging right now, even while we're talking, because some of you are looking on your computers. Some of you have your phones in front of you. Uh, wait till you view the rest of this podcast, of course. But then actually go on there and look up your BMI, because I think some of you are going to be surprised about the number. And keep it in mind, it's not an exact science. You have to give room for some error. But at the same time, we're talking about a little error, not a huge error, okay? All right, so also um, we wanna talk about why are individuals obese? Why, right? Why can't there just be a magic wand that says, right? And we're all good, we're at the perfect weight and size. And um, unfortunately, life is not like that. Just like um, individuals that are out there who are listening and you, you happen to are going through sickness, and maybe another chronic disease, or even this one, um, life happens. And so what we do is we encourage each other and we deal with it and we get on track to do what is necessary to not always fix it, but to make it better um, and to do something that will um, improve our health. So let's look at it that way. It's not always a quick fix. It's not always a fix, but it's a, how do we improve where we are right now? Um, so sometimes, you know, one of the number one um, ways that an individual um, becomes obese is that it's inherited. So, and there's a lot of factors in that too, okay? Because, you know, if you have a gene, right? Um, even your physicality, that's another one. Um, because sometimes when you look at individuals, you'll say, wow, this person, um, their buttocks area is larger than another person's, right? So that gain, there's the gain of weight. Um, this person's thighs are larger than another person's thighs or their ankles are larger than another person's ankles. Um, our necks, larger than other people's necks, sometimes people's heads. Um, there's so many different parts of an individual um, some people you, you see them and they're, they have more muscle mass than another individual. Um, it's about, you know, that inherited, um, what we were inherited in our gene pool. Um, and then, like I said, um, physically, how is that person put together? All of those things are factors in determining if you're going to, um, you know, if you're a subject to being obese immediately, long-term, right? Or um, in the future, based on some of the other factors that we do in life. Um, and also our diet. When we grew up, how did our parents um, eat? Were our parents obese? And did we take on some of the, the, the health, the, um, you know, the eating habits, the um, activity that our parents did or the lack of activity, because that's another choice that we make, uh, my physical activity. Um, and, you know, do we exercise? There are families that the children exercise with the parents. You run with your parents. Um, you go to the gym with your parents. There's um, activities, sportings, uh, you know, uh, running as far as sports for school, uh, baseball, softball, um, you know, basketball, football, um, hockey. There's so many different avenues that we do with our parents as we're growing up. But there's some, some children, they did not have that opportunity. And so that's not an, uh, you know, an activity that goes on or is passed on uh, in the family. So their activity level may be low. So all of these things are reasons why 
individuals may be obese. Um, and then what are some of the causes? So, you know, as we get older, I'm learning that my calorie intake is not what it should be from the past. So a person of my size and, and yes, I am larger than I should be. Um, but a person with my height, the calorie intake is a lot lower when I, um, now than when I was younger. So we're talking almost 700 calorie difference. And so that doesn't just happen overnight. It, you know, you have to adjust and begin to eliminate some of those calories, but at the same time, um, implementing healthy food and vegetables. Um, so then you're, you're, you're getting less calories, but at the same time you're eating healthy and your body is getting the nutrients and, um, minerals and all the things that it needs to be healthy and survive. Um, so it's a, it's almost like a balancing act, right? Um, and then also physical activity, which we were talking about why someone would be, um, obese. And this is the thing. I don't know about you, but you know, I'm aware that there are many communities that, you know, we, we talk about food insecurity and we talk about, um, you know, homelessness and all these different things in society, but many times people live in dangerous communities. And so where you have other individuals who are able to run in their community, right? Um, and they can even run by themselves or they have access to gyms. There are many people who do not have access to those type of things. So they don't have access to, um, you know, being able to put out more money to go to a gym so they can exercise or being able to safely run or even play ball in their community. So those are things that lessen their opportunity to lose weight. And, you know, we talk about people's jobs. So think about years ago, the jobs were a little bit more, I think, you know, you had your warehouse jobs, manufacturing um, uh, plants, things of that nature, where more of the jobs now are, we all sit down, right? A lot of them are virtual or hybrid. Um, however, you're still um, not as active as you were before. So all of these things, and I know you're thinking, well, this sounds so uh, simplistic. Yes. All of these things are very subtle. And we look at it as if, well, is it, is that the reason why I've been gaining weight or it could be, I'll give you another example. So we used to go to locations to pick up our groceries. We went to the supermarkets. We went to the banks. Um, we went places to pay our bills at locations. Think about that. You have to get in the car, you have to drive. Sometimes you'll go shopping. Sometimes you do these things. You know, we don't shop. Um, in person, what do we do? We end up shopping online. So you're not shopping in person. You're not going to the bank in person. Um, you're not paying your bills in person. Think about what I'm saying. There's a lot of lack of movement. And so it goes against our calorie intake. And then if we're supposed to have less calorie intake, so all these things are working against us, right? Think about it, they're, they're working against us. Now, remember, for my faith-based uh, people, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for my good. So are those things working together for your good? Hmm. So you have to think about that. It may be working together for your good to provide you additional time. It saves you time. But is it really profitable for you if it's saving you time, but it's causing another issue in your life? So it's just something to think about, right? Because those were the times when you were able to exercise and exercise is getting up and walking. You ask any doctor, if you are unable to be mobile and move your knees or you're unable to be mobile and do a lot of things, a doctor will tell you, you can you walk? And sometimes people can't walk. So then you have to sit in the chair and you have to work at those uh, areas 
in order to get to a place where you can now walk. But once you can walk, the doctor will tell you, you don't have to walk fast, just begin to walk. And then you work up to where you need to be. So think about it like that. Like all of these things can work in our favor and some of these things can work against us, okay? Um, and then we think that, you know, the age, well, you know, that's a young person's chronic disease or, oh no, that's a mid-age person's chronic disease or, oh no, that's an older person's chronic disease. It happens at all ages. So if you're sitting there and you're saying, yeah, that's true because it's happening to me right now, then yes, I'm speaking to you. And some of these things, we can begin to make some changes almost instantly in our lives. Think about it. Some of you right now, if you're unsafe in your neighborhood, perhaps you can visit another neighborhood and, and walk, right? Or maybe, you know, you can say, all right, I can possibly go to the bank instead of always doing my banking online or, or getting my groceries sent to my house. I can actually get up and I can go out and exercise by walking. Like, you know, start to take back some of the things that we just surrender over because it's convenient. But what is it actually doing to us? It's causing us to sit behind an actual screen longer, right? Or it's causing us to, you know, maybe I'm just sitting there. I'm not really doing anything now. It gave me an extra 10, 15 minutes, but I could have been exercising during that. So I'm even encouraging you right now while you're sitting there, um, you know, watching this podcast, uh, what I've been doing is I started to implement while I'm actually on meetings now. And, and some of you are going to see it in some of the podcasts in the future. You're going to be like, oh, she's exercising while she's doing the podcast. Absolutely. So you're going to see me standing in front of you and I'm going to be doing the podcast. But guess what? If I hadn't had an opportunity to walk that day, I'm going to walk with you. And I'm going to talk with you. So right now, even while you are watching this podcast, you could get up unless you're already standing and you can start to walk in place. Literally just walking in place. That's exercise, right? You can start stretching, doing different things, right? While you're listening to me and while you're communicating with me. See, I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to encourage you because I honestly believe that even if we make some small changes in our lives, that it's gonna make a difference, okay? Um, a couple other things. Also, it could be hormonal. So that's why I said always talk to your doctor because it's really important. Um, your hormones could cause you not to want to exercise. Your hormones could be a cause behind why you're not uh, losing weight, okay? Sometimes that's insulin related. Um, it also could be because of our muscle mass, right? So if we have more muscles, um, you know, it increases our metabolism, but when we have less muscles, it decreases our metabolism and how it flows. So think of using some weights while you're having meetings or you're standing there doing that so you can start to build. I'll be doing the exact same thing. So I'm hopeful that you guys are going to start seeing my arms getting a little more ripped and, you know, and then you'll begin to see me when we're in public and, and I'm out at the park or I'm talking to you from the podcast, you're going to start to see my body uh, change and hopefully in a better um you know, a better way. And I, you know, we both can be accountable for one another. So all of you out there, you make me accountable and I make you accountable and we'll get, we're going to keep talking to one another. Um, and I'm going to share a couple of other items with you um, as we're moving forward in regards to obesity, but I just wanted to get started today. We always do our encouragement. Minute, so we uh, like to talk to you about something dealing with uh, cancer. Um, or sickness or disease, something that we can help you with. So I do not have samples in front of me, but I'm going to try to make it um, a point to have samples in front of me in the future. But I want to talk to you about something really specific. So we had someone contact us through a friend and they were concerned about um, their hands from the chemo 
they were getting uh, black. The tips of your fingers are, um, are getting black. And I'm here to let you know that that is something that can happen. It is, um, you know, a symptom that a person is on chemo. Uh, so if you see someone who has black fingernails or black hands or, you know, um, they should never be ashamed uh, to walk out and to be who they are because simply that is something they're doing um, through the chemo to get better. And we are always going to encourage each other whenever we're doing anything in life to get better, to, to get healthier. We want to encourage each other. So if you see someone out and they have black hands or black feet or um, the tips of their fingers are black, it's probably from a medication that they're on or it could be uh, chemo. And we don't want to make people feel insecure. We don't want to make them feel bad. Um, but I'm here to tell you that I can't guarantee yours um, will go away. Mine did. And many others that I know of, uh, their the blackness went away as well as the black on the fingertips because the chemo was stopped. Okay. And it began to uh, reverse. So I just want to encourage you on that. Also, this individual um, said that they were going through um, the pain of the neuropathy, which you know I, I dealt with. And so that pain in my hands and in my feet have been dissipating. My feet is still a little there, but they're al it's almost gone. My hands, no more neuropathy. Um, but while I was um, going through the, the major pain in my hands and in my feet, what I began to do is to um, talk to my doctor and he told me that um, there is certain um, ingredients or ointments that um, have hot chili peppers in them and that would be profitable for me um, to be able to put on my hands and my uh, about a couple of times a day, actually. I will share that with you. I did share it on another podcast, but I'm going to share that with you next time that we talk because um, I do not have that in front of me. And I want to make sure you see the picture of it so you can um, get an understanding in regards to that. Uh, also, you can also use CBD oils. Uh, CBD creams. They're very helpful in that as well. And you just rub them right on your, your, the burning areas, the hurtful areas. And it was profitable for me. I can't guarantee it will be for you, but it should be helpful. Okay. So that is our encouragement. Now, um, going back to what we were talking about in regards to obesity, I definitely want to encourage everyone out there. If you have some information that you want to add, you can contact us as of next week, not this week, but next week. Um, our telephone number is 856-857-1859. And you can be able to put some information on there that you want to share. And I can um, speak about it during the Encourage Minute to help others. If you have a prayer that you need and you want us to pray for you, we can also do that. In addition to that, if you have um, an issue that you need assistance with and we can research it for you or we can talk to some of our partners um, who are in the health industry and they can provide us some information, we will uh, give that to you as well on future segments, okay? Um, one more thing that I wanted to um, talk with you, we are at the end of our podcast and I just wanted to encourage all of you, if you are out there and you want us to continue doing what it is that we are doing and bringing awareness to sickness and disease and to some of the benefits of some of the medications, some of the benefits of the, um, the herbs, some of the benefits of, you know, all the things that help us in our community uh, there are so many services out there and we want to be able to interview people. We want to be able to bring all of that information to you. So if you are out there and you say, this podcast has really been wonderful to me, um, this the opportunity I want to continue and to share with other people. Um, below, you will see a QR code and I want you to scan it and I want you to donate on behalf of uh, Encouragement on Fire. You can just put that in the the actual uh, reason or memo. Um, it is, we have partnered with the Meeting House 
and they are the nonprofit that will be receiving money on our behalf that we can continue to bring you awareness as well as help others in the community. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that, that we are definitely uh, receiving uh, donations at this time. So everyone, our time is coming to an end. And you know, I hate to leave you. I truly do. I love talking with you. And I'm hopeful that um, we can be together for a very long time. And there will be many testimonies and many victories in all of your lives, um, triumphs and many survival stories. I just want you to uh, reach out to us through phone, reach out to us through email, and just let us know how things are going, okay? All right, this is Shirley Farrar, and this has been Encouragement on Fire. I'll talk to you soon.